Hi, I'm Anthony Anderson, and welcome to Golf in America. This episode's coast-to-coast -coast journey takes us to Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, where John Feinstein gives us a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to be a rules official at a PGA Tour event. Then, we travel to Belleville, Illinois, to learn about one man's admiration for Jack Nicholas and the lengths he'll go to enjoy a round with the Golden Bear. But we begin in Detroit, Michigan. For most people, Golf is a passion, a pastime. But for one man, it was a lifeline, the only way to avoid becoming a statistic in his crime-ridden neighborhood. Keith Anderson may not have any championship wins under his belt, but golf opened up a new world and literally saved his life. Golf is my salvation. It's the same as I compared it to when I was a kid. It's like a tropical oasis. I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, the stress, the, the hustle and bustle, all that disappears, and it makes you feel like you're on vacation. Keith Anderson renews his love of golf every time he steps foot on the course. It's a love he found on his own, by accident, really. His father never taught him the secrets of the game. His family didn't belong to a country club. It was a sport that seemed out of reach for a boy who grew up on the east side of Detroit. Well, it's my home. It's where I grew up. It's where I was born and raised. And uh, this neighborhood was a part of me. There's a lot of memories here, both good and bad. It was overrun by gangs, gangs who consistently solicited us to be a part of them almost on a daily or weekly basis. Whenever you heard a noise, a gunshot, a scream, you always wondered if it was your house, if it was your neighbor's house. One of my great friends, when growing up, his name was Darren, he actually lived right here in this house. He's doing life in prison right now. That easily could have been me. Keith's mom and dad insisted that he work over the summer to keep him out of trouble. His mother, on a tip from one of his friends, signed him up to be a caddy at one of the most exclusive country clubs in all of Detroit. She began to drive me to the country club of Detroit every morning and dropped me off at 6 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday through Sunday, religiously. I had no interest in carrying bags for overstuffed rich men. So when she dropped me off, I would wait till she left. I would then leave the parking lot, walk like a mile to a friend's house, play basketball, play video games, hang out with him all day. Keith, uh, better known as Tippy. Uh, what we uh, former golf caddies used to call him because he would always kind of tiptoe around while other caddies were trying to get out and, and carry loops. He was always disappearing. It's, it's degrading. It's below me. I'm not doing that. You know, it's just like, I, it's completely degrading. And they're like, well, you know, degrading or not, I make over $100 a day doing this. And I'm like, 100 bucks a day, huh? Okay, we need to kind of rethink this a little bit. With renewed focus on caddying and an opportunity to play, Keith began to find joy in the game of golf. But that joy was short-lived. Keith was just 15 when he lost his father. My dad died. It got really difficult. My mom, she wasn't the financial person. And I guess when it finally came time for Keith, you know, to go to school, she was really tapped out emotionally and financially and she couldn't do it. When she told me that that was it, that there was nothing she could do, and my entire inside just collapsed. It was like everything that I believed in, everything I worked on, I knew was just going out the window. Again, golf stepped in and offered a way out. Two members at the Country Club of Detroit told Keith about a full scholarship available to caddies called the Chick Evans Scholarship. The Evans Scholarship was founded in 1930 by Chick Evans. Chick Evans was a renowned player in the early 1900s. The Evans Scholarship is a full tuition, full housing scholarship for a young person who is a caddy, who has a financial need to give them an opportunity to change their life. 865 young men and women 
are in college today because of the scholarship program. 9,000 have graduated. Like Keith, each applicant endured a rigorous interview process before eventually learning their fate. I'm going through the mail and I see this letter from the WGA. She was like, well, open it. I go, I, I can't, I can't open it. Mom, I'm like holding my future in my hand. And I remember saying, uh, it can't be good news. It's too thin. You know, it should be thick, like five pages, you know. Um, it can't be. She's like, just open it, Kate. So I opened it and, uh, you know, the first, le the first sentence was, uh, Dear Mr. Anderson, congratulations. And, um, uh, man, my mother just collapsed. You know, tears of joy. Because I knew that I was finally going to get out. The scholarship cleared the way for Keith to attend Michigan State University, where he studied industrial organizational psychology. It was an opportunity he never took for granted. Keith and I went to Michigan State together. He was very proud to be there. Uh, he loved to have a, you know, a lot of fun, but he knew that you know, he was gonna get out of there in four years and graduate with a degree. In the final year of Keith's college career, he faced another setback. His mother passed away. She never got to see Keith graduate from college. She never really had the chance to kind of see what became of me, but I know she's proud. Keith now works at General Motors designing training programs for the OnStar team. He lives just outside of Detroit in Shelby Township, 45 minutes from his old neighborhood. He's now ready to begin his own family with his fiance and her five-year-old daughter. He just taught me to, you know, to never take anything for granted. His motto is life is made up of little moments and you need to enjoy every little moment that there is. Everything that's positive in my life is because of golf. My own, my education, my career, my family, my status, all stems from golf. It's why I'm here. And for that, I'll forever be grateful. Keith's story is receiving a lot of attention in the Detroit area. He plans on using his newfound voice to inspire young kids to consider caddying as a job or even an opportunity for higher education. For more information on the Evans Scholarship, you can visit www.evansscholarsfoundation.com. Coming up on Golf in